Good morning and welcome to the Great Lakes Health Program with Kaleida Health on the legendary Power 96.5 FM, 1080 AM, uh, 1080 AM. And, or you might be listening through Google. So welcome. Welcome to the first, our first program in October, 2021. I'm your host, Francesca Messiah from Kaleida Health. And at Kaleida, we're concerned about your health as well as the health of your family and of our community. And especially during COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic, Kaleida Health continues advancing the health of our, of our community. And I also want you to know that our Kaleida, the Kaleida hospitals are open, our clinics are open, everything is open, and we are following all of the New York State and CDC COVID pandemic protocol. Kaleida Health offers over 30 virtual and recorded presentations for your classroom, nonprofit group, religious group, PTA, PTO, teacher in service. Our speakers can our, our, uh, cover a wide range of our uh, professions from physicians to nurses, radiologists, social media experts, uh, social workers. We have uh, t- uh, healthcare professionals to cover the topic that you are interested in learning more about and educating your group. Some of our uh, topics include what are pre-existing conditions, pre-existing conditions that can lead to stroke, pre-existing conditions that can lead to cancer, pre-existing conditions that, that, that impact COVID. Our programs are for adults as well as children. We cover, we cover the, the, uh, the, the gamut of topics and speakers. Also, if you're interested in having a virtual presentation, we can, Kaleida is available to meet through you and your group through Facebook Live, Zoom, WebEx, radio interviews, uh, Skype, Microsoft, and and FedEx. Uh, For more information about topics and virtual presentations, please call 716-863-8717. I'll say it a little slower. 716-863-8717 716-863-8717 or email F Messiah M-E-S-I-A-H at Kaleida Health, K-A-L-E-I-D-A, H-E-A-L-T-H dot org. And also, did I mention that our Kaleida Health Laboratory Department are scheduling presentations on careers in healthcare? Our careers in science specifically careers in science so again if you're interested in a virtual presentation for your high school students college students school youth group church again please call 863-8717 or email f messiah m-e-s-i-a-h at kaleida health k-a-l-e-i-d-a health.org kaleida health is also the largest health care provider in western new york serving the area's eight counties. And Kaleida Health, our facilities include Buffalo General Medical Center, Gates Vascular Institute, Millard Fillmore Suburban Hospital, John R. O'Shai Foundation, John R. O'Shai Hospital, Great Lakes Cancer Care Collaborative, or you'll often hear referred to as Great Lakes Cancer Care, the Visiting Nursing Association, long-term facilities, as well as several clinics. And all of our Kaleida Health facilities are accredited by the DNV. A couple of things just before we get into our interview, I want to mention October 16th is the Breast Cancer Walk at our, at Outer Harbor beginning at 10 a.m. You're encouraged to, you can join the Kaleida team, you can sign up online, you can form your own team, or you can walk as an individual. October is Breast Cancer Month. And on October 23rd, we have a free PSA screening that's calling all men at WUFO, uh, 143 Broadway Avenue. If you are screened that day, which is a a five-minute blood screening, your name will go into a raffle for Buffalo Bills tickets, UB Bulls football tickets, gift cards, T-shirts, and many other things. Well, moving on, let's get on with our interview. Our interview for today, as I had mentioned before, this is Breast Cancer Month, and our interview for today is with 
Dr. Tambar. Um, and, and Dr. Tambar is a breast surgeon, uh, breast cancer surgeon, and she works with the General Physicians Group. She's also part of UBMD and also a part of Great Lakes Cancer Care Collaborative with her medical degree from the University at Buffalo. Welcome, Dr. Tambor. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on today. Oh, you're welcome. And Dr. Tambor, I, I know in our a previous conversation, you mentioned you received your medical d- degree from from uh, uh, UB. Did I miss anything about a fellow? I know you had mentioned um, some your fellowship or something, accreditation. Yes, I finished my fellowship in uh, breast surgical oncology at Georgetown University in D.C. Yes, thank you. I just I just like for because you worked hard for those degrees. I want to make sure our listeners are aware of that. And we appreciate you. Well, I'm (laughs) um, I'm, I'm with our interview because breast cancer is so important. Um, I think everybody knows someone who has had breast cancer. Um, sometimes people have survived and sometimes they haven't, but I would be willing to guess that almost all of our listeners have known of somebody who's had um, breast cancer. And on that note, I just want to ask Dr. Tambor, is breast cancer, is it only a woman's disease? Uh, Breast cancer tends to be overwhelmingly a woman's disease, but male breast cancer are not unheard of either. I have personally treated four male breast cancers myself. So it's certainly not uh, rare, but uh, when men have breast cancer, there's about a 50% chance that they have some mutation in their DNA versus when women have breast cancer, the chances of having a genetic mutation is much lower. So male breast cancer do tend to come from a lineage. So there's generally some history in the family. And what does mutation in the DNA, what exactly does that mean? It means there's something wrong in the DNA, something changed in the DNA that put them at a risk for getting cancer of the breast or and other organs. How has uh, the detection and treatment of breast cancer changed over the past 30 years or 40 years? How has it changed? So the 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 the. the, the Detection has changed uh, a lot since the, it first started. We first started as a 2D mammogram, and now we are already doing 3D mammograms where instead of taking two pictures of the breast, we take about 30 plus photos. Um, and the acuity of de- detection has improved because now we use computer aided uh, uh, detection methods where the computer actually helps find even smaller lesion that may not be visible or obvious to um, radiologists alone. So the technology has taken us far in how we detect breast cancer these days. And, and, I, and I also want to, 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 to let our listeners know that um, breast screening services are available at, at Buffalo General Hospital. And it's, it's you know, you, you would, um, I don't know, would, would, would they call would they go through their doctor or would they call our, our department? Do you know what they would do first? Usually they do need a referral for screening mammograms, which is uh, uh, which should be performed on all women over the age of 40 uh, every year uh, without breast complaints. So these are, uh, these are usually uh, provided by either primary care providers or uh, gynecologists, depending on uh, how the patient likes to proceed. Mm-hmm. Now, now, you, now you um, talked about the initial age and, and working in the community. As a matter of fact, I'm I'm in the process of of uh, uh, leave, leaving a community event. That is always a number one question: is um, the initial screening. I get that all the time, and I always have to refer people to their to their primary care uh, provider or their um, OBGYN. What is the recommended age? for initial screening of breath, for mammographies? For average risk women, uh, the, uh, the recommended age is 40. Uh, and there are women who are higher risk based on their personal factors or family history. Their screening can start as soon as age 25. So it's really the women need to be evaluated and assessed for their personal risk of breast cancer that will determine, but for average risk is age 40. 
Mm -hmm. So, so you're saying that if, if a, um, if, if a, a woman or, or a man, if their mother and grandmother have, have breast cancer, have been detected with breast cancer, that they should go as early as age 25? So at that point, they would be, um, they, they would be a candidate for genetic testing to detect any mutation in their DNA. And if any is identified, uh, for example, the, the BRCA mutation, if that is identified, then yes, they could qualify for screening at the age of 25. Mm -hmm. Do they ever go with, with, with the uh, DNA screening? Could someone be, could, could someone be recommended to go be earlier than age 25? Usually 25 is the earlier I've started. Uh, we usually do also assess the youngest relative's age at the time of diagnosis. So if truly there was a patient whose mom got diagnosed at the age of 30, I might start them 10 years younger, which would be age 20. Okay, thank you. And another question I always frequently get, and again, I ha I'm not a medical, I'm not a clinician, so I always refer it back to the, for the individual, the person to contact their primary care, OBGYN. Um, how often should, should um, a woman re, uh, receive a mammography? We usually recommend mammography to be performed every year uh, until the, uh, the life expectancy is over 10 years. So if at any point in time, again, this is all a guess uh, uh, on medical evaluation, uh, if the life expectancy is less than five to 10 years, then we do uh, stop doing screening mammograms because the benefit of screening mammogram is much less at that time. Mm -hmm. And where, and where can someone go for a mammography if they don't, if they don't, let's say if they don't have a primary care um, and um, they haven't gone to an OBG, OBGYN in years, I, I know they can go to um, Buffalo general <laughs> at what, what are some of the other, um, locations within the community that, that one can go? Sure. There are, there are many locations uh, throughout the, the city and, and uh, outlying suburbs. Uh, there's Great Lakes Medical Imaging and there's Winsong. Uh, they, they all provide uh, 2D and 3D mammograms for screening purposes, so they can really go anywhere, uh, depending on what's most convenient. Um, how, how, how about the medical vans? How about the, the, the pink buses or the Winsong has a, a bus where they actually do the mammography uh, on the van. Does it, does, it, does it matter if a woman has her mammography in a van or in a medical office? I believe uh, the, the mammogram machine in the van is not a 3D mammogram, I, uh, but I could be wrong about that. I think the last time I, was, uh, I checked, it was 2D only. So definitely there is a certain difference between a van versus a, um, an office mammogram. If, if someone does have breast cancer in, or breast cancer in their family, let's say their, their mother or their grandmother has it, um, is it recommended they get a two, is it, does it matter if they have a 2D, a 2D or a 3D machine for their examination? 3D mammograms are pretty much becoming standard at this point. Uh, the, uh, the, all, all the cancer network guidelines recommend uh, 3D mammograms. So we really don't uh, send anybody for 2D mammograms at this point. Okay. Well, and, 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 I, and I, of course, most of us ha have heard of the, the WITNESS program. And one of the things with that, with that program, it was um, for, to overcome the fear that some um, some people, some women have of going to the doctor number one, getting mammography number two. What what are some of the things that some things that you some of your recommendations for overcoming fear? Because we because we know fear is is real. So any 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 tips, anything you can offer? You know, you've you've been a medical, you've been a breast cancer surgeon for for years. What would you say if somebody knows they need one, they haven't had one? They're 55 years old. What would you recommend to help them overcome their fear? What I would recommend is, you know, ignorance is a bliss is an old saying, and uh, it's truly not, doesn't work in breast cancer because um, the earlier, the smaller we find breast cancer, the most likelihood we have of completely curing it and never having it come back. But if we find the cancer in a later stage, the risk of cure is lower and the chance of recurrence is much higher. 
So I would say, you know, if you don't have any problems in the breast, that's the best time to get screening because if there's anything small, we can catch it and treat it and you won't have to worry about it. But if we, if you wait until you actually have a symptom, it may already be late. Mm -hmm. Um, If someone has been diagnosed with breast cancer, does it always mean they're going to have to have surgery? Usually uh, after breast cancer diagnosis, surgery, uh, most patients, I would say all patients need surgery, Uh, but chemotherapy and radiation are variable. Not everybody needs chemotherapy, not everybody needs radiation. So it really depends on um, the patient and what surgery they go through that will determine what other treatments they need. So, so it's, it, it, so the process is surgery first and then like a chemo, possibly chemotherapy would is second or do they ever ha- yeah. have key? Ke- oh, okay. So, so you can't have chemo until you have surgery. Is that how that- certain, mm-hmm. certain breast cancer do require uh, chemo first Uh, Those are breast cancer of specific type or the breast cancer that are advanced stage. They may require chemo first. Mm -hmm. And, and, and just a brief overview. And what does the the chemo, what chemotherapy, what either before the cancer or after cancer, I mean, everyone hears this term chemotherapy and I know even chemotherapy has advanced over the years, but what is chemotherapy and, and, and what does it do in the treatment of breast cancer? Sure. Uh, Chemotherapy is a medication that's given to uh, kill off uh, any cells that divide rapidly in the body. So tumor cancers are one of those cells. Um, So uh, that's why it works, because uh, it targets those specific cells. Uh, Other normal cells in our body that also divide rapidly are our hair, our skin, or the lining of our stomach. That's why during chemotherapy, a lot of people lose their hair and have dry skin or have problem with with reflux or uh, acid in the stomach because those cells are shedding quicker. Um, So they, uh, but the chemo works great for cancer uh, by shrinking the size or completely uh, making it go away. Mm-hmm. If someone was interested in, in learning more or if they think they feel a, a, a lump in, in their breast, what should they do? They should uh, contact their provider and undergo a mammogram and an ultrasound if they have any lumps that they feel in their breast. Would they, would they contact, would, could they contact your office or create someone at Great Lakes uh, Cancer Care for um, for a first, you know, consultation or yes, they can they can contact our office and they can uh, they can come in for getting evaluated and we can do images and biopsies. Mm-hmm. And 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 um, could could you just do uh, I, I know we, well we, I think we have a good eight minutes left. Um, how often should women do a self breast examination? Uh, Women should perform self-breast exam every month for women who are uh, premenopausal and having monthly cycles. They should perform breast exam about a week to 10 days after they start their periods because that's when the breast is going to be the softest and they're going to be able to pick up any new lumps in their breast. And for for postmenopausal women who don't have hormonal changes throughout the month, they can really pick any day on the calendar and perform their exam that day. Mm-hmm. And, and I've heard people talk about lumps under their arm. Is that is that another sign that you may have um, something wrong? So um, under the arm is where the lymph nodes are. Um, so sometimes, uh, not that uh, often, but we do identify breast cancer with um, a lump underneath the arm. That's where the lymph nodes are getting swollen because of the cancer present in them. And uh, once we work them up, we find a breast cancer that was just not palpable. So um, that is one of the ways we sometimes identify breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so if someone has been identified with breast cancer, how long before is, is do they have to wait on the surgery? Does or does it normally happen pretty quickly? Usually, uh, it happens pretty quickly once we have the entire workup complete. Um, the national standard is to operate within ninety days of diagnosis. I try to operate within 30 days. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. 
Yeah. Because to me, that sounds like at 30 days, it's, it's, it's more of a life state. It, it sounds like you could, you know, you're really saving lives at 30 days. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. What, what are things that now, now once the person's brought in, do, do you meet with the family or just the individual? Uh, for new parents or diagnoses, I do prefer for them to bring family. Some people bring large amount of family. Some people just bring a significant other. Uh, uh, some people have uh, family on, on the phone because they were not able to be on in the room. So really, uh, I like to for patients to have their support system with them because that's what's going to help them the most uh, to deal with the diagnosis and go through the treatment. So um I, there's really no one standard because everybody's support system is different. So people come in with varying numbers of family and friends. Mm-hmm. Do you ever do a, a, a tele, tele, uh, telephone or telemedicine with a patient that's been, that's been diagnosed or is it preferred that the patient always come into the office? New cancer, I would prefer to see in the office because I would like to also feel the cancer and image it, make sure I, I'm able to identify it. But follow-ups, we do uh, do telemedicine uh, based on patient preference. Mm-hmm. And, and I just want, and again, I want to make sure our listeners know that with it, Great Lakes Cancer Care, which is a fully accredited cancer service, which uh, Collida is part of, ECMC is part of several other um GPPC is a part of, they also, once you've been diagnosed with cancer, um, had your surgery, et cetera, there are social workers that they, uh, that, that, that the individual, the family can meet with. There is support group information. So I just want to make sure that our listeners know that if this is what happens, it's, it's, it's you and your entire team around you that, that, that makes up uh, Great Lakes Cancer Care. Is, is that correct? Yes. All, all cancers are a team approach. No one physician or no one specialty or no one uh, discipline can cure cancer on their own. So we do work closely in a team. And in addition to physicians, we also need a lot of su- uh, support for the patient. We have nurse navigators, genetic counselors. We have um, all the specialties that patient may need to go to the treatment and even afterwards. Mm-hmm. Well, we, we, we have a few minutes left and I know that I've asked a lot of questions. Is there anything you'd like to share with our listeners about breast cancer? Uh, bre- breast cancer is one of the most common cancer of women. Uh, one in eight women uh, are diagnosed with breast cancer, but it's also most curable cancer. Um, it's just need to be detected on time. So I would, um, I would love for women to take ownership of their health and take care of themselves and go for the annual screening mammogram. Yes. And I like that. Take ownership. I just wrote that down. Take ownership of your health. I'm going to say of your health and of your friend's health. Cause we know a lot of times women talk to other women, to, to their friends or family members, and um, sometimes they'll, they'll, they may guess, like you just said, every year you should have a mammography. Sometimes their friends might say, well, I'm not sure if it's every year, if it's every two years. So you really need to stop and ask your, um, your primary care physician or your OBGYN. Um, it's nice to talk about things with, with your friends, but when it comes to the medical accuracy of how often Everybody's an individual. Healthcare is is individual, and your case may not be the same as your friends. Is that correct? Correct. Each each breast cancer is unique. Uh, uh, all breast cancer treatments are tailored to a particular patient and their disease and their stage. So uh, not everybody uh, uh, is quali- qualified for all the same treatment that another person might be. So it's really an, it's an individualized treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, we, we, we have about two more minutes left. Is there anything you, you'd like to, to share with our, our listeners about the importance of the breast cancer walk that's that's coming up um, the 16th at Outer Harbor, why they should uh, get involved? I think it's, it's a community support of women supporting other women. Uh, it also supports breast cancer research in the community. Um, so it's, I think it would be extremely important for all women, uh, to come and participate and show their support. Yes. And it's very festive. Even I've been there when it's been a beautiful fall day and I've been there when it's been torrential rain 
and it's still beautiful. It's um, <laughs> beautiful pink. You don't have to wear pink. We just want you to be supportive. Be supportive of your fellow sisters, be and and and, and brothers because men men do re- do um, get breast cancer, and um, and there again there's a website for, to. Um, to our uh, register for, for, for the, um, for that walk on October 16th. And on, and on that note, Dr. Tambra, I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank you so much for being our guest this morning on the Great Lakes Health uh, program. Thank you so much for having me on today. Thank you. Oh, you, you, you're, you're welcome. And again, in closing, I just want to mention a couple of things. We just talked about October 16th. Uh, is a breast cancer walk at Outer Harbor beginning at 10 a.m. If you'd like to be part of the Kaleida Health Team or the Great Lakes Health, um, uh, Great Lakes uh, Cancer Care Collaborative Team, or form your own team or walk as an individual, we encourage you to do that. Also on October 23rd, from 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. is our PSA screening. Again, that's a detection for prostate cancer that affects men only. And uh, again, if for the men who are uh, screened, the five-minute blood test um, screening on that day at WFO, WFO, uh, we we'll, we have tickets to the Buffalo. We're r- raffling off tickets to the Buffalo Bills, UB Bulls. We have cufflinks, we have gift cards, and we have T-shirts and things from Kaleida and WFO. And if you have any questions, please uh, go uh, send an email to F messiah at kaleidahealth.org well next week you'll be hearing from my colleague at ecmc and that is cynthia bass and in two weeks um you'll be hearing my voice again and that is francesca messiah from kaleida health be safe be smart and social distancing works bye-bye